Well, great to have the now a packed house here. Um, we've had a good time so far here in Munich, and uh, really excited to be here, and thanks for having us. So the project we're presenting today that we've been working on, we've entitled BMW Journeys. In one sentence, what our mission is, is to enable BMW drivers to capture and relive memories of their journeys using the BMW's in-car cameras. So a quick background on us and the project and this class. So we're five Stanford University students. We're in our fourth and final year at school. And this project is part of a 20-week course that spans two terms or two quarters um, in our class. So we've had our, we just finished our winter quarter. That was 10 weeks. So we're at a half time of sorts. And we look forward to going back in the spring for 10 more weeks. And we'll finish up our class and this project in June. Back in Mountain View, in California, we've been working with the BMW Technology Office there. Uh, there are liaisons, most specifically uh, Mr. Ehrman, Mr. Jessen, and Mr. Metzler. So a rough timeline of where we've come so far, and this is also a little bit of a roadmap for our presentation today. The first four weeks of the class were dedicated to team building exercises, introductory material, and best software practices. By about week four or so, February 1st, we received our project prompt from BMW and started going on the project. We brainstormed with our liaisons to discuss some big ideas, one of which was this car camera application that we ultimately settled on. The next week we pitched our app idea to some notable venture capitalists who came to our class. And this was exciting because we got some good affirmation on our idea. Out of the 12 or so teams in our class, we actually received first prize for best presentation overall app idea. So that was really exciting. After this, we did some preliminary market research using a Facebook ad campaign. That'll actually be the next topic covered in this presentation. Then we got down to business and started coding. So we built an Android platform or Android client um, on one end. And then server side, we have an Amazon Web Services. Uh, EC2 box that we use for using a database and a content creation website. Again, those will be shown later. By week nine, we were ready to conduct a user test. Fortunately, one of my fr good friends at school, he owns a BMW 328 coupe. And so we took him around the Stanford campus and showed him what we had built with our BMW journey so far. So that was pretty neat. And then this last week or so, we started integrating using the A4A platform, and in conjunction with the BMW Android SDK, we hope to extract user data uh, from the car, and of course display our user interface not on the Android smartphone, but rather on the center console itself. So, going back to the beginning, when we were brainstorming, we thought about what are some big trends right now, especially in the car space. So one thing we were excited to find when we were researching is BMW's X5 <coughs> model having uh, not only a rear view camera, but also the front panoramic camera and the side view cameras found under the mirrors. So this was neat for us to explore. And we thought a little bit more about what's the general world we live in today. And one thing we've noticed is we live in a hyper-sharing culture where people of all ages are constantly sharing photos and short videos on social media, whether it be Facebook, Twitter, WhatsApp, Instagram, you name it. Photos and videos galore. So again, as we were thinking about it, I actually had some personal inspiration. This is a photo I took last winter. I was taking a drive on the beautiful yet windy Pacific Coast Highway from San Francisco down to Los Angeles. This spot is at Big Sur, which is about halfway in between. Now in order to take a photo like this, what I had to do is pull off to the side of the road at one of the overlook points, take out my camera, cross the traffic, make sure that I didn't uh, get hit by anybody, try to uh, snap the perfect shot, and then continue with my journey. And so, as we were thinking about some of the things that we just mentioned, we thought, we have these cameras that are on the, built into the car, what if we could just use them as we're driving, capture the photos, and continue on and enjoy the ride? So, of course, anytime you're multitasking in the car, the topic of safety comes up, and rightfully so. 
So when we were thinking about our product, we wanted to make sure that users are able to capture high quality photos safely. And we know this is a big topic because large media outlets such as CNN have reported how young drivers in particular seem to have no problem pulling out their phones as they're driving and take photos of their surroundings, themselves, or their passengers. Perhaps not surprisingly, they end up sharing it on social media and add the convenient hashtag, I hope I don't crash. So in some ways, we wanted to make sure that what we built was uh, important for user safety and made sure that they had a good experience and a safe one. So some global trends, especially combining the car and camera space. So first, in the last few years, especially in Eastern Europe, the GoPro has really exploded as a, as a device that users use to uh, capture continual video footage during their drive. They just put the hardware piece on their dashboard and let it, let it go. So again, we were thinking, why do you need this external piece of hardware? We have the cameras built in, let's use them. Interestingly, Corvette, about a month or so ago, announced that for its newest Stingray model, they are adding a feature where uh, users can take photos, or sorry, take videos as they're driving around a racetrack and use that in conjunction with car data such as speed and acceleration and lap time in order to relive their journey. So this is similar to the BMW Lap Timer app that already exists, but we thought it was really neat that they were adding the video element to that. Our app, we imagine, would be similar, but more consumer focused as opposed to racing focused. And users would be able to capture photos as opposed to being re reliving these uh, races on the track. And lastly, uh, the company Apple is getting pretty involved in the car space. In addition to their CarPlay, just last week they announced that they were applying for a patent in which iPhone users would be able to remotely, remotely control their camera using a, a third, another device, a remote control. So in sum, you put these all together and we think we're really onto something. Being able to control your car's in-car camera remotely just from the center console. So before we move on to our next section about marketing, I just want to pause to see if there's any questions on this introductory material. Awesome. Let's switch gears here. So, before we could proceed with developing our product, we first wanted to conduct some preliminary marketing campaigns on Facebook targeted at multiple audiences that we think would be interested in our product. So we used Facebook ad campaigns and we quantified the interest in our ads by the number of clicks and click-through rate for each ad. And we used the insights we gleaned to shape our future product development. So what, are, what target audiences did we focus on? We focused on three audiences mainly. Luxury car drivers, like the BMW user base, photo sharers and social media enthusiasts, and finally travelers and tourists. We also narrowed down our we also narrowed down our audience to four tech hubs in the USA known for being technology and having many technology enthusiasts. And we also had many features that we wanted to gain some insight on. For example, one feature we were very interested in knowing more about was where should the camera be located? Do users rather prefer option A, an exterior facing camera that allows you to take scenic photos while driving? Or would they rather have option B, an interior facing camera which allows you to take pictures of yourself and your friends while you're driving. Another feature that we were interested in was how the camera should be activated and controlled. Would users prefer having a camera that could be activated with their voice commands? Or would they rather have a camera that could take photos on its own intelligently without user supervision? And so, in our campaign, here's a sample Facebook ad. As you can see, it features a bright picture, a catchy tagline, and a pithy summarization of our product below. And so, now on to the results. So, we found out from our responding to the ad that there was a stronger, there seemed to be a stronger preference for an interior facing camera as opposed to an exterior facing camera. Mm -hmm. Also, we found out that our users would rather have a app that is automated, takes pictures on its own, instead of one that they would need to have voice commands to control. And also, can you, can you just, so the click-through rate is below one percent for the rate. Um, for the left side, right? Just to make sure. Yes, the click-through okay. rate is below one percent. Mm -hmm. Okay, so moving on. Yep. 
And also, we wanted to conduct um, our market research from a BMW perspective um, in terms of the age demographics. So we split up the clicks by each age bracket, and we found out that it peaks specifically in the 18 to 24 range, as well as the 35 to 44 range, with there being a significant amount in the 45 to 54 as well. And knowing that the BMW average BMW driver is ages in the 40s, we feel like the preliminary data is encouraging, though more market research must be done. And so how this shapes our product? Going forward, we decided to make sure that our app could support cameras from multiple angles, interior and exterior, to satisfy all their needs. And finally, we wanted to place a heavy emphasis on an app that could learn how to take photos intelligently instead of just mindlessly. And we wanted to focus on techniques like computer vision and machine learning so that we can always capture the best photo for the app. Cool. So I'm going to run through what the user testing actually looked like, and I'm going to show some pictures of it as well as give some feedback. Um, maybe one of you guys could run the slides for me. Sweet. Cool. So up here in the corner, we have kind of the early prototype of our application. We'll have a live demo later, and we'll go through that. Um, we actually had to construct a kind of hardware prototype to go along with our software because we currently don't have the ability to capture photos and videos from the car. So we basically took a Sony wireless lens camera, the QX10, and some suction cups and stuck it on the car. Here is uh, Juan mentioned earlier, who was our very first user. So yeah, so this is actually the Stanford campus. These photos were all taken with the application during the user test. We tried to get a mix of interior facing as well as exterior facing photos. So these are two pretty iconic things from Stanford. The uh, Hoover Tower and Memorial Church. And then here's some photos we took facing inward. So, yeah, so here's, here's the actual feedback. So I'll let you guys read the quote, but the general gist we got from the user was that he wanted to have both automatic and manual photos because he didn't want to be constantly engaging with the car while he's driving around. Obviously, it's, it's dangerous, it's a bit of a nuisance, et cetera. But there were a couple times when he would see things that he wanted to capture immediately and would want the ability to trigger that event. So furthermore, um, he's also very excited by the sharing options. He really thought it was good that we didn't force him to kind of port the images and videos to another application to share, and we could just share directly from the application. And also wanted to have more ability to curate the content at a later time, which is where our destination starts. Great. 